All right, the 12 days of Christmas did not go off to a smooth start. As per my video the other day, you know that I'm using the same stamp set for all 12 videos this month to make 12 spectacular Christmas cards. And the reason being, well, there's a couple behind that. First of all, I wanna focus on the learning and the techniques versus pushing all of this product. So I wanna be using the same product so that you can see and focus on the learning techniques and apply it to what you have in your stash. The other reason is I wanna challenge myself to see if I can use a stamp 12 different times to create 12 different cards and actually get the use out of it. Another thing that I'm exploring is, are these bundles really worth it? These stamp die, layering stencil, hot foil plate bundles, you know, do they really provide you so many more techniques that it's worth the price tag? So I'm exploring all of these things all throughout the 12 days this month. All right, so to begin, I started off by grabbing a fresh pad of alcohol ink cardstock. Now, I've never used this cardstock before because I finally ran out of my stash that I took with me from North America when I moved to Europe. So I'm trying a new brand of alcohol ink paper. Okay, I've got my area prepped for alcohol inking. I'm in a well-ventilated area so I don't get high off the fumes. I have gloves on because that color isn't going anywhere soon if you get it on your skin. And I also have my isopropyl, isopropyl, isopropyl so purple. My alcohol inks are decapped. Is that a word? <laughs> and then I've got my isopropyl alcohol ink ready and I got some fancy eyedropper tools because I saw some really great alcohol ink artists use these and maybe it'll make a difference. Probably not. But let's see. Okay, so I started with the alcohol inks, and as you probably know, alcohol inks dry super quickly. In order to get the color to move, you add some isopropyl ink on top, and then you blow it with either a straw or maybe you have a fancy blowing tool. Okay, so I'm going along, and I noticed that this isn't drying, and the color's not moving. Was this like the worst paper choice ever, or what is going on here? So after three failed attempts at creating a background, I was starting to get frustrated. And I actually ran out of my isopropyl alcohol at this point, so I decided to refill it, and that's when I realized I was not using isopropyl alcohol, I was using hand disinfectant. So if you use hand disinfectant, the colors don't move and the alcohol inks really don't dry, so that's a fun experiment. So I switched out the hand disinfectant for isopropyl alcohol and then I was on my merry way and created a super gorgeous background. The inks had no problem moving around and they were blending with each other and just doing its alcohol ink thing. All right, so I'm using a really large sheet of paper and the reason is, is I want to try both heat embossing and hot foiling on alcohol ink cardstock. Now this can go two ways. It can either go, no, actually three ways. It can either go really well, it could get semi-warped or it can melt completely because alcohol ink paper, I believe, is made out of some sort of plastic and plastic and heat, well, you know how that usually turns out. So I'm not 100% sure at this point, and after creating four backgrounds at this point, I'm really hoping that it works out. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is cut my piece of paper in half, because it's not gonna fit in the misty if I don't do that. And I'm gonna try the heat embossing first, and the reason being is because I have more control over the heat gun and how long the heat is applied to the paper versus a hot foil machine. The other reason is, if it happens to melt, it's gonna melt on my surface or on my hands, and as painful as that might be, I'm kind of okay with scraping things off of a glass board versus ruining my hot foil machine, right? Okay, so I've stamped in my embossing ink, I've added some silver embossing powder on top, and now comes the moment of truth. I decided to heat up my heat tool on setting two um, because setting one isn't going to melt it enough. Um, setting one is more for drying surfaces. Setting two is more for melting embossing powder. And I'm going to have it fully heated up and ready to go before applying it to my paper. Now I'm going to do a combination of applying it to the back and the front of the cardstock. I'm going to try not to spend too much time on one particular area in hopes that it melts quicker, the embossing powder, than it melts the paper. Right? All right, let's give it a try. Well, the good thing is that it does work, um, but your paper does get a little bit warped. So I'm not 100% sure if I'm gonna be able to use every ornament that I've done because when I apply the coordinating die on top, because the paper's warped, they're probably not going to be very set in the middle. So I'll probably only get half of the ornaments out of it, but it's not a big deal. This is all about experimenting. All right, let's try the hot foil machine. <laughs> this is where I'm a little bit scared. All right, so I'm ready to hot foil. I have my foil picked out. I have turned on my machine and let it warm up, and now I'm going to heat up the hot foil plate. I'm not gonna have anything on top of the hot foil plate at this time. 
All right, so my hot foil plate's ready to go. I add my foil and my paper and my sandwich in and I pull it off of the heat to cut the heat right away and shove it through my die cutting machine. Now, let's see what happens. Is this gonna melt all over my foil sheet? I'll melt all over the platform of the hot foil machine. I don't know, but things aren't going well so far, so I'm a little concerned. And yes, it did not melt. I was successful in that area. However, a lot of foil was applied to areas it shouldn't actually be attached to. Now this could have happened for two reasons. One, the alcohol ink might not have been completely dry yet and foil will stick to that. So I could try leaving the alcohol ink next time on my surface to dry. However, I am in no mood to create another alcohol ink background at this point. So I'm gonna use this, even though it looks like a hot mess, because I'm wondering if I can scrape off that foil. Since the hot foil plate actually creates an indent into the paper and puts the foil indented, the surface, the very top part of my cardstock where all that extra foil is, is actually a little bit higher than the foiled areas. So I'm wondering if I take a sandpaper eraser at this point and start actually um, erasing or sanding down my paper if it will actually take off the foil without damaging the background. So this was successful enough, you could say. <laughs> um, I got majority of the foil off. It looks a little bit like a hot mess on some of them. So again, I'm gonna pick and choose which ornaments I'm going to use for my card. So at this point, I'm down about half the ornaments that I hot foiled and half the ornaments that I heat embossed, but that's okay. I'm gonna throw this through my die cutting machine now and I'm going to get these cut. So one thing you'll notice in my craft room is I have two die cutting machines. I have one manual one, mainly that I use to take out when I'm doing foiling, and it's also the eight and a half by 11 one. It's a big die cutting machine. So I only pull those out when I'm doing tons of die cutting, and I only pull it out when I'm doing my hot foiling. So I already put it away, so I just went to grab my Gemini Junior, um, my normal die cutting machine, my electronic one, because I don't like cranking, it hurts my hands. And that's when this happened. So yeah, I had to grab the manual die cutting machine because my Gemini Junior broke. Yeah, and this is why this is the most expensive card ever made because not only is it using one of those crazy stamp bundles that I get sucked into buying now and again with all of the coordinating products, but it also cost me a die cutting machine. No fault of the stamp itself, of course. That's why you're seeing this beauty here. I decided after three Gemini Juniors, um, two broke and one was because I was moving. I invested in a Sizzix switch and I'm trying this out now. All right, I decided to create a pretty unique card here. I was gonna attach my ornaments to a piece of acetate and create a clear cover on the front of my card because I'm going ambitious here. It's the first card of the 12 days of Christmas, so why not? Yeah. First of all, I decided to use liquid glue. I wasn't sure what I was thinking. Liquid glue and acetate really don't go together. You need to use tape. And then my clear paper there was so thin that it wasn't working to actually flip and look like a normal card, okay? So yeah, that, that idea was scrapped right away. I need thicker acetate if I'm gonna do this. So we're gonna go with just adding the ornaments as is to the backgrounds of these cards. I'm gonna do one on white and one on black because I have enough ornaments to do so. And one thing you'll notice here is that when you have tons of detail, like the alcohol inks, you're not really gonna notice, is it an embossed image in silver or is it a hot foil image in silver? So no worries, if you don't have the hot foil plate, um, you don't need it. Hot, heat embossing the stamp with silver embossing powder or gold embossing powder, or whatever color you're going to use, will look just as fine as a hot foil plate. You won't see much of a difference when it's on such a busy background already. So on the card panels themselves, you'll notice that the ornaments here are applied. On the black cardstock, I just glued them straight onto the cardstock, and on the white cardstock, I switched things up here and there. I glued some straight to the cardstock, and I added some with some foam tape. And that was so I can get a little bit of a variety and a little bit of dimension on the card. And then I went and cut all around the edges to get myself a really pretty background of ornaments. One thing I like to do though is I like to tie in the colors here and there. There's a lot of blue and a little bit of silver. So I decided to add some silver confetti to the card to embellish. And not only that, I mounted the card panels then onto a piece of silver cardstock just to give it a nice little frame around the card. I think the most important lesson of this video is not that everything can go wrong, but rather keep fighting for your card. If you've started a card making process, finish it until the end. In the end, it might be a learning experience that you toss in the garbage, but you might end up with two stunning cards at the end after all, even though everything looks like it is a hot mess along the way.
Now, if you'd like to create alcohol ink backgrounds like myself, check out this video here. I'm gonna meet you over here and show you eight ways that you can use those alcohol ink backgrounds on your cards because I always end up creating these beautiful alcohol ink pieces and then I never know what to do with them. So I'm gonna show you eight ways on how to use them. Let's go.